All right, here we go. Mouse one. A survivor's tale, my father bleeds history. So before we start, I want you to know it's a fable. A fable is a story that's using animals that has a purpose, has a moral. It's two stories in one. It is Art Spiegelman. And when I talk about art in the present, he's the author of the story, but he is in the story. He's the artist, he's the author. And it's really his story connecting with his father. So when he's a grown man, and this is happening in the 70s, 80s, when he's a grown man, he reconnects with his father. His father and mother had both survived Auschwitz. What are the chances of that? A married couple, they go into Auschwitz and they both survive. So the story is, I'm going to say the present, which is art in the 70s and 80s, connecting with his father. They've had this bad relationship, which we're going to get to understand as we read. And he's reconnecting his dad. His dad is kind of sick at this time, and he exercises on this exercise machine. And Art kind of comes in and says, hey, tell me about Auschwitz. Tell me about what happened. So then I'm going to say the past, that's before Art is born. And it starts off in the late 30s. So in both cases, the past and the present, we have Vladik Spiegelman. He is the father. We have Anya, the mother. And, of course, we've got when they met and how the, the Hitler and the Nazis come in and the Holocaust. That is what we are referring to as the past. And then you've also got Vladek in the present. And there are going to be keys that Art Spiegelman uses to let us know we're jumping back and forth. Only here in the epilogue are we in a different time. So it's 1958. So this is when Art's a kid. Rigo Park, 1958. It was summer, I remember. I was 10 or 11. Last one to the schoolyard's a rotten egg. I was roller skating with Howie and Steve till my skate came loose. Ow! He fell his weight up. Aha, uh -huh, rotten egg. You see the lines of motion around uh, young Art. He's crying. There's the star there. You see the, almost in panel two, almost like a telescope. It zooms in to see the skate break. And he says, oh, wait up. My father was in the front yard fixing something. Artie came. Artie, come to hold this a minute while I saw. Uh, why do you cry, Artie? Hold better on the wood. I fell, and my friend skated away without me. He stopped sawing. Friends? You were friends. So this is Vladek. And then Art's the young boy at this point. If you locked them together in a room with no food for a week, then you could see what is friends. I want you to think about this for a minute. The older I get, the more I appreciate the father-son aspect of this story. But I want you to think about what it would be like to survive a survivor. What it would be like growing up. Imagine how many times you've gone to your parents, especially when you were younger. I got a bad grade. So-and-so bullied me. I fell down and skinned my knee. My girlfriend broke up with me. I didn't make the team. All of these times when you have gone to your parents and they soothed you. And well, imagine how often is Art going to go see his dad? He, here he is. He's in my friends and wait up for me. And he says, well, what do, what do you know about friends? I survived Auschwitz. When you are stealing crusts of bread for your life with people you thought were your friends, and that is a test of friendship, not this little skate business. Now, is Vladek wrong? No. But is our wrong to go to his dad? No. Imagine what it would like. How many, how often are you going to keep going to your dad? My girlfriend broke up with me. I got a bad grade. I, I skinned my knee. When, think about it, compared to surviving the Holocaust, your little woes and worries do not compare. So how long before you start internalizing and stop going to your father? Because you don't want that comparison because you know you can't win. I don't think Vladek, the dad, did it to be cruel, but it was his reality. And this is the son's reality growing up, trying to survive a survivor. Imagine what kind of relationship you would have in this epilogue, or, or the prologue, I should say. It's a prologue. It really sets up the patterns for things to come. You've heard me say that before. So it really sets up this dynamic between father and son. Okay, here we go. My father bleeds history. Chapter one, the Sheik. So here we are in the present. So I'm going to say late 70s, early 80s, when he published the book. I went out to see my father in Rigo Park. I hadn't seen him in a long time. We weren't that close. Papa, oh, hey, Artie, you're late. I was worried. It's a shame Francois also didn't come. Francois Art's girlfriend, now his wife. Uh-huh, uh, she sends her regards. He had aged a lot since I saw him last. My mother's suicide and his two heart attacks had taken their toll. Stepping away from the text, panel two. Bam! My mother's suicide. 
Now, there is a fairly high suicide rate amongst survivors. You can imagine having your whole world ripped apart, seeing everyone you love destroyed, and growing up with that. So we don't know when this happens, but we know it happens. Now, we know she survives Auschwitz, but when, how long, we're, we're going to find out later. But obviously, it's impactful. I mean, he's telling this us, he's telling us this on panel two. Continuing on. Mala, look who's here, it's Artie. My dad was remarried. Mala knew my parents in Poland before the war. Before the war, She was a survivor, too, like most of my parents' friends. Oh, hi, Artie. Let me take your coat. The dinner's on the table. Ach, Mala, a wire hanger you give him. I haven't seen Artie in almost two years. We have plenty of wooden hangers. They didn't get along. Look at the last panel. Facial expressions. You can see and there's not much. The mice are purposely drawn very similarly very blank expression but all of a sudden now you can see on his face right his countenance the crook of his eyebrows he's not happy another way we are reading things right after dinner he took me into my old room come we'll talk while i pedal it's good for my heart the pedaling but tell me how is it by you how is going the comic business you know i still want to do that book about you the one i used to talk about you know, about your life in Poland and the war. <laughs> it would take many books in my life. And no one wants any way to read such stories. I want to hear it. Start with Mom. Tell me how you met. And better you should spend your time to make drawings what bring you some money. But if you want, I can tell you. I lived then in Chastakova, a small city from far, not far from the border of Germany. I was in textiles, buying and selling. I didn't make much, but always I could make a living. We're pausing here. You hopefully watched the Back to the Future clip where we saw, what, how is it telling the story? The foreground and the background, where the characters stand, the high angle or the low angle. Every time it showed Biff, it was from a low angle, he looked bigger. Every time it showed Marty, it was from over Biff's shoulders and a high angle, he looked smaller. That's telling the story. Biff's a big guy, he's a bully, he's going to be bigger than him, they're confrontational. That's another thing we are reading. I am asking you now to start reading things like facial expressions, uh, the words that are boldface. Why is that last panel circular? A couple other things. Now the circular panel, this is often a sign we see Vladek in the present, he wears glasses. Vladek in the past does not. But there's almost always like a panel within a panel, or square panels to circular panel, or the present being drawn without a panel, the past being drawn with a panel. There's always a key that says, hey, we're leaving one time and we're going into the next. And here, it's almost like a telescope, isn't it? Zooming in on the past. But now I also want you to read something else. Panels four, five, seven, and eight. If you look and you put those together, so I'm starting on the top left and working left to right and down. One, two, three. So panel four, panel five, panel seven, panel eight. If you look at that, what do you notice? You put those panels together, four, five, seven, eight. If you put them together, can't you see his father on the bicycle? He's riding the bicycle. And as he's riding the bicycle, and he starts to turn the wheel because the circular panel, which zooms in on the past, represents the wheel, but it's almost like he's starting to spin his story. And as he starts to turn the wheel, the story comes into focus. He's spinning his yarn. He's telling us the tale. Also, panel five. Notice anything? What about on Vladek's arm? We've got, obviously, the numbers. Auschwitz was the only one that did this. But look at the positioning of it. So one, you know right away it's somebody that survived the Holocaust, somebody that survived Auschwitz. But look at the positioning of it. It's as though it's suspended over Art's head. As though this symbol of Auschwitz, this terror, the number, you're not a person, you're a number. It's a symbol of the Holocaust. It's been hanging over Art's head his whole life. Look what happened back in 1958, Rigo Park. Dad, my friends are paying. Oh, what do you know about friends? I survived the Holocaust, right? It's been hanging over his head, and here it is drawn literally. Hang the symbol of the Holocaust is hanging over his head literally in the fifth panel. Now, what I just did, looking at more than just the words, looking at more than just the pictures, but in this case, the symbol on the arm, how it's positioned above his head, the wheel, how it's both the story being spun and 
brought into existence, but it's also the circular telescope like we're zooming in on the past. I am reading more than just the words and the pictures. I am reading more than just the words and the pictures. I am slowly but surely going to ask you to do the same thing. So I envision, you know, you got a very easy assignment this week. I envision next week as you're going to blog about it, sort of, it's not going to take long. You're just going to do a forum response, but you're going to respond in exactly the same way. You're going to talk about how you are reading the, the literacy of the comic book. You're reading more than just words and pictures. Again, in this case, I was reading the symbol on his arm, the positioning of that above his head, the circular panel and what that represents. I'm certainly reading more than just words and pictures, facial expression, panel shape, all of that stuff. That's what I'm going to ask you to do next week. So continue watching how I do it this week. So we've zoomed into the past. I was at that time young and really nice and handsome boy. I had a lot of girls, what I didn't even know what would run after me. Hello, Vladek, this is Yulik. You can even tell by the dialogue balloon that it's not speaking, but it's someone on the telephone. A friend of mine, Lucia Greenberg, would like to be introduced to you. And then again, we have a borderless panel. Why? Because it's him in the present. The present hasn't been defined yet. It hasn't been written. So now it's the only panel on this page without a border. Why? Because it's the panel that's taking place in the present. People always told me I just looked like I looked just like Rad Rudolph Valentino, the movie star. Eventually, I took Lucia to dance. Do you live alone? Yes. I have a small apartment. My parents moved to Salisbury. Oh, I'd like to see it sometime. Yeah, maybe. Whenever I went, I looked around, and Lucia Greenberg would always be there. Vladek, which way are you going? Oh, just to the market. Oh, me too. Let's walk together. Again, borderless panel. We're going back to the present. Yeah, but Pop, M Mom's name was Anya Zeigelberg. Oh, this before I met Anya. Just listen, yes? Oh, why don't you ever invite me to your home? Are you ashamed of it? She kept insisting me to show her my apartment. So finally I invited her. Everything's so nice and clean. I like to keep things in order. You must have another girlfriend who cleans for you, no? No. I didn't want to be more closer with her, but she really wouldn't let me go. Was this the first girl that you, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, we were not, we were more involved, so like the youth here today. We saw each other to, we saw each other together for maybe three or four years. Let's get engaged, Vladek. It's late. I'll take you home. Not yet, please. Come on, your parents would worry. Her family was nice, but had no money, not even for a dowry. Dowry, one of the terms from, uh, that on Quizlet, the vocab, just means a bride price, a dowry. This is culturally what they would do when the girl got married. You know, the man's taking in a new new mouth to feed, essentially. So he would, you know, pay the uh, bride's family. We're talking a cultural thing. Certainly we've moved beyond this in most cultures. Well, in many cultures, not not all. But it's a, it's a typical thing a dowry is a bride price. Now on the ticket, we've got every Wednesday. I went to visit my family. It was maybe a journey of 35, 40 miles. Cousin Vladek. So here again, you see the pigs passing by. Those are the Polish. The mice are the Jews. It's good to see you again. Listen, uh, there's a girl in my class I want you to meet. Her name is Anya. She's incredibly clever. From a very rich family, a very good girl. Next morning, we all met together. My cousin Aunt and Anya spoke sometimes in English. How do you like him? Oh, he's a handsome boy and seems very nice. They couldn't know. I understood. Well, <clears throat> I promise to be uh, getting home early. I'll leave you two alone. You know, you should be careful speaking in English. A stranger could understand. Y you know English? Did you study in school? I had to quit school at about 14 to work, but I took private lessons. I always dreamed of going to America. This is one of the things that helps Vladek get along. One, he's very smart. Two, he picks up things very easily. And three, he speaks multiple languages. This serves him well. Oh, it's a shame you have to return to Chastakova so soon. Yes, but I have my business. Have you a phone at home? As soon as I came back to Chastakova, she called. Once a day, twice. Every day we talked. And then she started writing me, to, writing me such beautiful letters. Almost nobody could write Polish like she wrote. So we're talking about his eventual wife, Anya, Art, Art's mom. I visited a couple times to her. She sent me photo. I bought a very nice frame. It passed maybe a week until Lucia again came and saw the photo. I'm going to get engaged to her, Lucia. Think about three ways that we know Lucia is being sarcastic here.
One, her body language. Look at, she's holding the frame away from her. Two, her facial expression is frowning. And three, she's saying beauty with the word bolded. So obviously it's the opposite. She doesn't mean beautiful. She's saying she's not very good looking. That's how we know it's sarcastic. Looks like everything, Lucia. It isn't good for either of us that you keep coming up here. We have to plan for our futures and all oh, forget her. Let me make you happy. It was not so easy getting free from Lucia. Mom wasn't that attractive, huh? Uh, not so like Lucia, but if you talked to her a little, you started loving her more and more. Again, panelist border, we're in the present. And it is really quite lovely, the relationship, the love between Vladik and Anya. One time we walked into the director from her school. Oh, you're very lucky, Mr. Spiegel, but Mr. Spiegelman. You don't know what a girl you're getting here. I've had many students, but never one as sensitive and intelligent as Anya. Yes, that's why I picked her. Oh, I wish you could visit me in... Oh, he says, I wish you could visit me in Shostakova. I'd like to show you off to my friends. Oh, I begged my mother to let me, but she's so religious and old-fashioned. She would never allow me to go to a bachelor's apartment. Anya's parents were anxious she should be married. She was 24, I was then 30. Oh, well, my parents would like you to come to dinner tomorrow night. The Zeigelberg family was very well off. Millionaires. The Zeigelbergs had a hosiery factory, one of the biggest in Poland. But when I came into their house, it was so like a king had come. Welcome, welcome. Anya, Vladik's here. Make yourself comfortable while I help with the dinner. To see what a housekeeper she was, I peeked inside the closet. Everything is so neat and straight, just the way I like it. But what's this? Pills? I wrote down every pill. If she was sick then, what did I need it for? Dinner's ready. Later, a friend, a druggist, told me the pills were only because she was so skinny and nervous. How about some more gelato fish, Vladik? To make a long story short, by the end of 36th, we were engaged, and I moved to Chostakova, and I moved from Sosnowick to Chostakova. Ah, I forgot to tell you something. Something before I moved to Sosnowick, but after the engagement was made. One evening, the bell rang. Lucia? What are you doing here? I'm on my way out. I oh, let me come with you. No, you can't. Please, Vladik. She held on on the. She fell on the floor and held strong to my legs. Don't run away. I saw now that I went too far with her. I ran out to my friend. What introduced us? He went to calm her down and took her home. I didn't hear more from Lucia, but also I stopped hearing from Anya. No telephone calls, no letters, nothing. What happened? Hello, Mrs. Seigelberg. Could I speak to Anya? She won't speak to you. But why? She got a letter from someone in Chostakovo. My God, it says the worst things about you. Well, I can't convince her on the phone. I'll come down on train on Friday after work. It wasn't even a holiday, but I went anyway to Sosnowick. So, tell me, Anya, what have I done that's so horrible? Oh, you should know. Just read this. I don't even want to see it. Just tell me who wrote it. Or better yet, I'll tell you. Lucia Greenberg, right? Well, it's just signed your secret friend, L. It says you have a very bad reputation in Shostakova, that you have a lot of girlfriends, and that you're marrying me for my money. Read beyond the words. How do we know she is upset? Well, facial expressions. The I guess the body language, really. She also drops the note. But why is the panel askew? What story is that telling? The panel is askew because it's showing us, the reader, the audience, the emotions of the character. Her emotions are off. She is so upset that literally the panel is off. Returning to the text. Anya, you should know me better. Ask anyone in Chostakova about my character. Oh, she's an old girlfriend who wouldn't leave me alone. She means nothing to me at all. And after much talking, I convinced her. So, I moved to South Snewick at the end of 36. In February 14th, 1937, we were married. I said there were romantics, right? Anything important about that date? To find your romantics. That's, that's Valentine's Day, right? February 14th. And now some vodka to toast the young couple. I moved into one of father-in-law's two apartments. He owned both, and he gave me part ownership of a very beautiful gold... He gave me part ownership and a very beautiful gold watch for a wedding gift. But this was... I just told you about Lucia, and so I don't want you to write about this. What? But why? Well, it has nothing to do with Hitler, with the Holocaust. Yeah, but Pop, it's great material. It makes everything more real, more human. I, I want to tell your story the way it really happened. Ah, but this is not so respectful. I can tell you other stories, but such things... Private things. I don't want you should mention. Okay, okay, I promise. Well, before we get to chapter two, what about his promise? 
He's promising not to mention it. Does he keep his promise? Of course not. We're reading about it right here, right now. I think there's going to be some guilt that's seeping out through Art the Sun for many things. One of them, you know, is it okay to turn the Holocaust into a graphic novel? Is it okay to use as a parable? Is he profiting off the Holocaust? All of these ideas, you know, many people are sort of two camps. Many people really love Spiegelman and think he's brought the Holocaust to a whole new bunch of people that would have never known about it. But then there's also a camp of people that say he kind of belittles the Holocaust and writing about it in a quoted comic book. That's why we're not using that term comic book. It's juvenile. It's, it brings upon negative connotations. But again, another thing you might feel guilty about, it's not always honest with his dad. So there you go. There's chapter one of Mouse Part One. Keep watching. Again, this week's assignment's very easy, but next week you're going to have to, it won't be tough. It'll be, you know, five, six sentences that you'll type, that you'll respond and talk about how you are reading the graphic novel, not just the words, but the pictures, the panel, the dialogue balloons, just as how I've been doing. All right. That was Mouse Part One from Book One.